It's just up here watching the the view. It's the ocean through the trees and the the camping ground just there. I just went for a little walk up there, and I was thinking. I've seen not one person come up the road today because it's Monday morning and I was thinking what video can I make while there's no one around? Oh, I can just sit in the middle of the road. That's <laughs> big. Just us. And then just before I was about to climb into the camping ground there through the fence, it came to me, oh, that's what I can talk about. <laughs> How my Monday mornings are my Sunday mornings, are, you know, the usual Sunday mornings. <laughs> because there's no one around, so I was thinking of a video title of, well it came to me of, you know, the idea of um, don't time yourself with organic portals, you know, time yourself without organic portals, I guess should be the title. Time yourself without organic portals human prison bars because there's no one around it. I feel so I'm starting to feel so nice even though the camping grounds nice there's still people there cutting grass and whippersnippering and around there's like a soccer field so there's people coming up and down the road I was like, wow there's no one here what day is it oh it's Monday <laughs> the robots are back in the circuitry Everybody's at work. <laughs> Have you seen those pictures of our, I don't want to identify with them, our towns and cities that look like circuit boards? Very revealing photos that this is, uh, you know, a computerish simulation type of thing going down here. Isn't it? Because um, I've said that the third dimension is, you know, which obviously moves like clockwork, is a mechanical dimension. But then when we consider the you know, hyperspatial DMT elves, uh, no one said this before me that I know of, but I have um, located them and referenced them as ninth dimensional. And they've got to do with time. The ninth dimension is temporal. So, you know, they call it space-time. I call this place time-space. And wouldn't you know it, everything organic portals do and say is backwards, so I must be correct, right? We know that by now. Like, they call this place life, yet you enter here screaming in pain amnesically, Where'd you come from before this? Oh, no one has a fucking clue. Right? That fifth dimensional wipe. That layer of the fifth dimension, the living light layer, wipes you. And all that can escape it is a higher spirit. Us higher spirit humans will get out. So nobody gets out alive is an organic portal saying they don't. The bodies don't. The corporeal bodies don't. But your celestial or light body does, yeah? The higher light body, the Christ crystalline spirit mental light body that I'm always going on about. And that's why it has nothing to do with if you have a soul or not. Because a soul is like an informational trap or um, database, basically, is what the soul is. And database! Oh, there's that simulation language and computer techno language. And you see the hyperspatial elves in your visions. Um, and you can read my vision on the Spirit World page in Consciousness Zine. It's funny, Ariel Ali drew the, those pictures that I used, so he's been there too. And then we have Terence McKenna who came up with the whole hyperspatial dribbling basketball elves thing with his DMT visions, right? Or his mushroom use. I've done mushroom use as well, and that managed to make me, or help me get there. But that vision was only after two two cannabis joints after a whole day studying so I was up up and then I collapsed into vision at the end of the day upon dusk I was driving home to where I was staying in my car 2011 and that made me make conscious as in too I was like it's time and I went across Australia the world's largest continent 
So, I mean, if that's all meaningless, uh, <laughs> you're a fucking moron. <laughs> anyway, because <laughs> uh, to the organic portal scientists, they'll say, prove it, uh, this, that. Right? They're acting like it's meaningless. Well, that's what you're acting like. <laughs> Look at the vision. Oh, it's just a vision. It's just all in your mind. They're giving it less meaning that it should be way up here and they're like putting it down, right? That's how you know they're organic portals. They suppress meaning and reasoning. Even on the whole thing we've talked about how they're illogical like that too. In a larger sense. Uh, anyway, so you come here screaming in pain. You enter here screaming in your first breath. Dying from moment one. So life is really death. Because that stuff is all dead stuff. It's dead plants, it's dead trees, and it's dead fungi. And alive fungi. If you can say fungi is alive, because it's barely here, and it's barely touching this place. But, you know, a lot of the, the mass of this topsoil is fungi. Uh, anyway, my point is that you're walking upon death. The world operates upon death industries. We have to kill the cow to eat it, yeah? See what I'm saying? We're in death. There was this spiritual community thing that came up a while ago um, that this is the afterlife. And you know how people call God and, and the high realms um, um, everlasting life? See, so it all fits in. It, it's all making sense to call this the afterlife. It's just very peculiar. <laughs> right? So are we having this experience after we have had light realm experiences and then this is the fall into matter which is afterlife? Seems to be something along those lines. Right? That's what we can piece together so far. Um, yeah, so this is death. We're not in life. But it, somehow life is pushing through here. And I've said before that Terence McKenna's Time Wave Zero discovered for us all that in the last one second, this universe has to evolve half of itself in one second. So the physical is one second away from, I don't know, the big rip theory or whatever, universal dis physical destruction, but it still has to undergo somehow half of its evolution of novelty. Remember, because the time wave was on novelty versus habit. So this habitual death plane uh, will be one second before its destruction or whatever. And it has to undergo half of its evolution. Now this, uh, this also makes sense, because we can see that this is how things happen. It's habitual, shum, novelty complex in your life. You go back to habitual, novelty complex. Right, you're you pulled down through these attracting pinholes, I call them. Across those temporal veils. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure to get that. I'm going to start getting that idea across. It's not life, and everything they say and do is backward. Which makes sense, because I've got that forward-backward asymptotty model note in Ben's bensnotes.weebly.com. A side branch of the tree that is consciousazine.net. Um, and in that forward-backward asymptotty model, you know, it's, it's very difficult to explain. Asymptotty, but then forward and backward. How do I explain that? It's somehow at the same time. I tried to explain it in that note, but um, this has nothing to do with how I started the video, right? <laughs> Maybe it'll wind up at, by the end. But yeah, so yeah, let's keep going. Forward, backward, asymptotty. Oh, he's going to go into the forest, I think. He's like, all right, you sit here and talk your human, your human bullshit. <laughs> he probably already knows what's going on. And I, I did make a video a long time ago, you know, how cats use the matrix. It's like they, they see inherently that these organic portals are to be used. What? All right, anyway, back on track. Um, so, yeah, the forward, backward, asymptotty model... How to explain it, you know, uh, somehow the asymptote is in it and then forward, oh yeah, that's right. It's like we facing down into matter is really facing backward and that facing forward is when you're looking up true to crown, crown chakra, like into vision, 
That's where you have your visions. You don't have them in your third eye. With your third eye, you roll the, your third eye up and you look into vision, into the higher realms. Through the rainbow bridge, magnetically suspended uh, bridge between brain hemispheres, right? Using the spin crystals of the pineal and the pumping of the hypothalamus and so on. Right, and you secrete and make DMT a high octane fuel, you might think of it. Remember, it goes from like 5 HTP, serotonin, bufotenin, and melatonin, the dream REM eye, rapid eye movement as you're going to sleep molecule into DMT, the pinnacle. So, we should be holding, you know, DMT, even smoking it, yes, which I've not done, which I'd really like to do. Because I did salvia divinorum, which is like it, I'm sure. Uh, we should be holding DMT as, not as God, but God damn up there. <laughs> and what do they do? They push it down into the drug war. It's a class A drug. Ooh, boogie woogie, boogie man. Right? So that's how you know who organic portals are. That's how I know everybody who speaks against drugs is insane. They are not the sane ones. That should turn your world upside down if you had that vision when I said that. Because on drugs, appear you appear uh, dislocated from this physical place, so they think the physical body people, yeah, we've explained this a million times, they're nothing but monkey bodies, they think, oh, he's not here, what a tripper, right? Yeah, you're, you're tripping on this reality because you're somewhere else, but it's higher where you are in those visions. So it should be held higher. That's my point. They push it down. Fuck, because I know some of you didn't get catch it. Didn't pick up what I was putting down. Um, yeah, so you know, we should if we want to change the world, we're gonna have to look forward, not backward. And looking backward or looking into physicality is uh, looking backward. That's why I hate when everybody tells me to get a job, and I've mentioned that already, that's very old programming. The way forward is not the way backward, moron. So saying get a job, go back to habituality is never the answer. Yeah, that's perfect. That did wind up. Did you see it? The whole video came together. 